A very warm welcome and good evening to this, the very first Rangers CEO Fans Forum. Fantastic to see so many of you with us this evening. We appreciate you giving up your time and of course this will be the first of our quarterly fan forums. It's part of a much broader strategy that, we've, that we're trying to implement from the board in terms of fan engagement and, and I know my colleague Greg will, will touch on this. So um, I've, I've already spoken on record I think from my perspective of the, the privilege and the responsibility that I feel coming in as the incoming CEO of, of Rangers and clearly one of the focuses that I've spoken about on the record and with, with our chairman John Bennett and right across the club is our focus in terms of support to engagement and support communication. So this is a really real representation of that. It would all agree one of the most special and unique things about Ibrox is the atmosphere that's generated by the supporters. Um, we've all experienced the, the big European nights and we have to look at ways of, of how we improve and we enhance that and we keep that going. One of the things that we are trialling that we think may help is a dedicated singing section. Now I'd stress at the moment that it is only a trial um, and we will, we will try different areas throughout the stadium for that. Regrettably that does mean for certain games that some supporters will be displaced from their usual seats. It's certainly not a decision that we take lightly. We do appreciate that supporters form relationships with people around about them. They get used to sitting in the same seats. Um, but we think for the greater good it's something that, that is worth looking at. Um, certainly Greg and I will work with supporters that are affected um, to make sure that they have alternative seats that are, are suitable for them and that they're placed beside their friends and family members and stuff like that. I know and I believe that it could elevate, if done properly, the, at the atmosphere at Ibrox. But we need to go on this journey in terms of exploring all the different aspects and listening to all the different views on it. Um, but again, in terms of stadium expansion, it's something that's discussed at board meetings. There's an appetite to explore it. And I think the next six to 12 months will give us a really clear steer in terms of what's possible and what isn't. And in parallel to that, we've asked our stadium architects to start to do feasibility in terms of where could safe standing work in terms of the infrastructure, the access, etc. So it's a live project. And hopefully when we do the next quarterly fan forum, we'll be able to uh, elaborate a little bit further in terms of where we're going on it. When it comes to the ticketing platform, I mean, I think it's fair to say we've heard you all telling us that what, what is there is is, is not up to standard, not up to scratch, and it's something that we're determined to, to make better. In order to improve that, we went and spoke to many of the vendors, one of which is one that you spoke about. Um, we had a pretty rigorous request for proposal process. We spoke to everybody. One of the challenges on our side was that we've had the same provider for over a decade. Therefore, all of the different departments that I kind of touched on before, everything from soccer academies to match day ticketing to my gels, they all use our current ticketing platform very, very different ways. So we had a, a big job in our hands to deep dive with each of those different stakeholders and really understand what they need, how it uses, but then also making sure that the processes that they have in place now are probably there because of the way that the, the system works. So we have to try to redefine as much as we can. Now we have 10, 15 years worth of um, business processes tied to a system. So that's why we've not jumped quickly. That's why we've not, um, we wanted to make sure we're as in depth as possible. So um, we're very close to finalizing all of our migration there. I've kind of lightly touched on the timeframes for that and make sure it's not a quick one. Um, we know when it comes to login, we've, we've, we, we rolled out a significant part of our single sign-on. When we move our ticketing, that will be part of that. So you'll be able to move from club site to, to ticketing and it'll remember where you are and who you are and that kind of thing. It's obviously so, so important for us that we, we maximise every revenue opportunity that we've got. And we talk about the four pillars, which is the season ticket revenue, commercial revenue, player trading and European football. We've got to get all of those right and we're really fortunate that in the last six, seven, eight years, we've grown the club's revenues and, and the board and the, the directors before me have grown the club's revenues to what was a record level last year, 85 million. We returned to profitability. We are in the same direction for the season just gone. So we're in, we're in really good financial health, but it doesn't mean that we can stand still. I think when you talk about creative opportunities, for me, that's also looking at the non-match days because we know Ibrox will be full 25, 30 times a year. And, you know, Josh has mentioned about the Levy partnership and 
creating a reason for supporters, for visitors, for tourists to come to Ibrox on a non-match day. There's, there's 300 of those and the museum sits at the heart of that. The, the sports bar, we do have some other ideas that, that we're working on, but the context of UEFA financial fair play also means we've got a really strong incentive to keep growing our revenues. Um, I'm very close with a lot of contacts at UEFA. I'm going to some meetings in Paris with the ECA in a couple of weeks. So making sure we're really close to the decision makers at European football level, because the from next season will be the last season of this cycle for the Champions League, the Europa League and the Conference League. We'll then move into the expanded competitions where there'll be eight games in the group stage. And there are already discussions around what does 27-30 look like. So Rangers need to be right at the forefront of those conversations because again, that's another really big lever in terms of changing revenues and, and, and maximizing where we can where we can go. And ultimately all of that is for the benefit of the team and the infrastructure here. You know, every every piece of revenue that we bring in, our first thought is how do we help Michael? How do we help the first team? How do we put a team on the park to, to be successful? A rising number of mobility issues as people become more senior, as they get older. And that's an issue that we're looking seriously at Ibrooks as well. So the, the development of the platforms and uh, will, will also benefit the overall access of the stadium, will create accessible uh, avenues into the stadium and to particular seat, seating areas within the stadium. So for instance, we're looking to develop 250 amenity seats that will be completely accessible from level access to a lift directly to the, the seating area. Um, but it is, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big issue that's, that's coming down the line as, and, it, and it's, it's happening as, as, we, as we speak. And it's part of the overall accessibility strategy that we're developing to, to make our stadium as accessible as it possibly can be within the confines of an existing stadium, obviously that's one of the issues that we have is we've got a beautiful stadium and nobody would want to touch it, but it is an old stadium. Um, so we have to work within those confines to, to make it as accessible as possible. The subject of the old firm ticket allocation continues to come up and one of the connotations of that is if that is readdressed and it continues to be a drumline that's given away to Celtic, what does that mean to the supporters of CFD that could be in BF1 uh, continue to get allocations to the Celtic games? I think that a great swap for the one, that's obvious. what I would expect to be proposed. Obviously we aren't at a proposal stage, there is no plan that way, so I think we're jumping a few steps by even sort of having this direct discussion on it. But um, from my perspective, it would be much the same way we would have for the move for the, the, the wheelchair accessible spaces that you would be essentially front of the list in terms of any spaces within the club. Obviously, in an ideal world, if we were open, if we were moving anything in blocks, we'd have a large block of some place to move them to, such as the cantilevers. We don't live in an ideal world at times, so we need to ad address that and understand it. But um, I don't think it'd be a direct, like everyone would just get moved from one block to another. That would, I don't, I, I, I can see why that would cause some concerns and discontent. Um, in terms of the allocation, James, do you want to touch on that? Yeah, so I think, obviously for the 23-24 season, given we've sold out the season tickets, the option or the opportunity there is to go to the small allocation in the Govan West corner. It's not agreed yet. We need to talk to the stakeholders, please Scotland, Celtic, etc., to get to that point. But I would say it's likely. I would say it's likely, to be honest. Beyond that is a much broader conversation. Um, I've just started to get myself exposed to it now. I think it's very unlikely that we get to a world where the entire Broomland is, is the, the allocation for Celtic. But there are other different options and scenarios. 